How do you create a brand that truly represents who you are and the products you sell, as well as building a business that you can scale online? That is what this podcast will help you do. My name is Henry Kaminsky Jr. and welcome to the Brand Doctor Podcast. Let me just make this statement loud and clear. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another Brand Doctor Podcast episode. Today, we're going to be talking about how to use your pain to power success. I have an amazing guest today who has quite an interesting backstory, which has really propelled him in his entrepreneurial career today in the real estate space. And we got introduced through a mutual friend. And I said, dude, I love this story. Got to have you on the show. Without further ado, I want to introduce John McSherry. What is going on, my friend? What's up, guys? Thank you so much for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Dude, I'm pumped to dive into your backstory. I mean, when we first met, you were getting into it a little bit, and I was like, holy cow. I know so many people that could resonate with this type of story, Uh, me being one of them. You know, we, we share similar pasts mm-hmm. uh, in some ways. And so for those folks that do not know who John McSherry is, let's go back to the beginning and talk about growing up mm-hmm. in, 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 is it in New York, right? Yes. Yeah, so born in New York, but went to college in Philly. In Philly, right. That's yep. what I thought. Yeah. So take us back. Take us, take sure. us back in the beginning. Sure. So in actually when I was 21 years old, my father passed away. He had lung cancer, died really young. Um, You know, we were pretty close. He was a very creative guy. He was an inventor, so never worked a day of his life. He would just create products and live off of patents, but he was also a compulsive gambler. So we just lived this very crazy lifestyle where we were in Atlantic City every week of my life growing up. But he was very creative. And what he told me was, I want you to do two things. I want you to think outside the box and be your own boss. And I was like, well, dad, how do I do that? He's like, you'll figure it out later. So, (laughs) you know, so I'm kind of grateful that he always allowed me to do what I wanted to think outside the box. Like I would write graffiti when I was a kid, I used to break dance and he supported everything. So he was very supportive of my creative influence. Um, And then when he died, when I was 21, it was a really tough moment because he was like my rock and I felt like a rug was pulled out from under me. So at the time, Um, I was working in nightclubs and going to college at the University of the Arts in Philadelphia, studying industrial design because I wanted to do what he did. And I was very creative growing up. I love to, you know, paint, draw and create sculptures. And I love graphic design. And um, so I went to school, but I continued working in nightclubs. So I was breakdancing, dancing on stage, bartending, hosting parties, raves, all kinds of parties in Philly and New York. And it was this thing that made me feel alive. Right. It filled this void within me, uh, the attention, the energy. And it kind of made me feel whole, right? Um, I feel like, you know, I lost my family and, and, and the club scene was a way for me to be reinvigorated. Okay. So as time went on and I partied more, started drinking more, doing all kinds of stuff, staying out really late, um, still did pretty good in school, but I was partying five, six nights a week because I was working in nightclubs. So what else do you do when you're working, right? In, in a nightclub, everyone else is drinking, so you drink. So that went on and progressively got worse, the partying, the club, staying up late. And in 2006, graduated college. And within a month, I became broke, lost my license and became homeless. And I didn't know what to do. So the only person I really had at that time that I knew could help me was my aunt in New York. Now, is this your father's sister? It was actually my mom's sister. Your mother's sister. Okay. Okay. So it's actually on the Italian side. And the Italian side loves family. They're very close. So I knew that they would welcome me with open arms. And she was like, yeah, sure, John, come to New York. I'd love to have you. And I knew that she had a half a garage where um, a live-in aide used to live. So I knew that I had a place to go. So I had a friend drive me to New York. He drove all my stuff, moved to, uh, moved to Long Island, New York, moved into that garage. And it gave me the time to just kind of take a step back and figure things out. Now, the progression of the disease of the drinking and the using continuously got worse. And, you know, I overdosed three times. I was resuscitated back to life. I mean, it it was really, really bad. And I was just on this mission to fill this void within me that just couldn't be filled. So 
at one point she's like, you need to go to a 12 step program. And at that point I was like sick and tired of being sick and tired. I was like, I'll do whatever I can to just be healthy and to live at this point. So went to the program and eventually things started to click and made sense. And I'll never forget the moment that I heard this guy tell my story. He was living in his, in, uh, his mom's basement and he just couldn't stop using. And he went to the program and he was given the serenity prayer and he did the prayer and something something happened right so he kind of felt that addiction removed from him but he also had to continuously do the work in order to stay sober and to continuously move forward so he told me that i went home did that prayer and i felt i felt this addiction removed from me but i knew that it was temporarily right so the thing is is that it gave me the ability to um depend on something else not just depend on myself to depend on a higher power or God or the universe or whatever you may consider. And it, it took a lot of the burden off of me and it allowed me to start doing the work. And what the work did was it removed all the guilt and the shame and the pain and the suffering that I was going through, through doing the 12 steps, right? It's a process mm -hmm. where I had to go out and literally make amends to anybody that I might've harmed in my life. But the good thing is 99% of them were like, you never did anything, right? It was just all in my head and the shame and the guilt was just playing over and over and over again in my head. So that process allowed me to remove that. But the final step was to go out and give it to other people. So mm. at this well, point, let me back up. Let me back up a sure. step. When you did that, when you did that prayer, mm -hmm. what do you think clicked there? I mean, I had a spiritual experience, and that's a personal thing to me. And and that looks differently for everyone. Mm -hmm. But for me, I knew that I wasn't in this alone. I knew that. I was able to depend on a higher power. I knew that I had a brotherhood and a fellowship of the program and I wasn't in this alone. And that's, and that's what really hit me. And I was able to give it a shot. So you the know? sense of community really Correct. got Big it. Got it. Got it. Really helped. And when I was going out, right. So that last step was to go out and help other people suffering. I was going to jail cells. I was going to rehab centers, going to meetings obsessively like my life depended on it. If I wasn't out helping people, I would end up going back to where I was going and I would probably die. So it was life or death, no job again, no car, nothing. It was just this obsessive need to go out and help people and serve people at the highest level possible. And that gave me what I call a design for living. Now, not everyone has to go through that. That's just my story. Not everyone has my story or hits a rock bottom, but that's my story. We all have different experiences in life. We're all chemically engineered differently. So I like to share that with people to let them know that it doesn't matter how far you, you fall, you could always get back up and you must get back up. And, uh, and then that's a big part of sales as well as constantly getting knocked down and getting back up. But back to the story is that design for living and obsessively looking for people to help is what helped me get my first job. Like right away, got, got this internship in Manhattan. They hired me after like two weeks, started working. And over time I started watching HGTV because I was a creative designer I fell in love with the renovations and the flipping and transformations. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's actually a good way to look at it because not only was I going through a transformation, but I was watching houses being transformed. So that really inspired me. I was like, one day I want to do that myself. And from that moment, I just started saving for that first property. And I lived in that garage for five years, saved every penny, didn't date, didn't drink, brought my lunch to work every day and just obsessively focused on that one goal. And in 2011, I bought that first property. But the thing is, shortly after, um, someone told me about the Rich Dad Poor Dad book. And I was actually in the cafeteria at work. And um, a woman named Julie overheard me talking about my renovation. And she's like, hey, if you're thinking about renovating, you should really re read this book. My husband read it. I think you would love it. So read the book, kind of inspired me a bit. And then I went to a Rich Dad Poor Dad conference. And what I learned is, Funny enough, I lived in that garage for five years saving for liability, and now I had to sell that liability and go out and buy assets. So it really changed my thinking where I was so focused on buying a primary residence when I should have been focused on buying investment properties, right? Because then the investment properties can fuel and pay for anything you want in life. Mm. And that's what I really learned from that moment. And from there on out, I just became obsessed about the education sold my condo, became an agent so that I could sell it myself. And then that got me some clients, started working with more clients, started flipping houses. Um, the first house I flipped myself um, in Valley Stream, bought it for 300,000, bought, bought it through a family member, well, a family member's friend. Mm -hmm. And the reason I got that deal is because 
I was telling everybody what I was doing, right? I was like, I'm a real estate investor. I'm looking for deals. I'm looking for opportunities. I was talking to everybody and telling them what I do everywhere I went. And eventually one day my aunt said, Hey, my friend's father passed away. They have to sell the house. Now you want to go buy cash? I was like, sure. So bought that house, closed on it, bought it for 300,000, put about 60 into it and sold it for 550. Nice. So after all the expenses and um, commissions, made about 150,000, but I was still still so full of fear that I wouldn't leave my job. And that was in 2015, 2016. So I knew that I really had to get- Let me back up. Sure, sure. Because that's a highlight too. Mm -hmm. What was the fear? I felt like that flip was just a lucky, you know, that I just happened to stumble upon it and that um, I would never be able to do it again. Right, right place, right, right time, right, right place. Got it. Okay. So it was a, it was a fluke. Right. That's okay. what I thought. So okay. I stayed at that design job, even though I love design, I was locked to a desk. I wasn't out talking to people and I, I wasn't engaging and interacting with people, which I really feel like I was called to do. Mm -hmm. So I decided to just start educating myself more, start sort of partnering with people, going to real estate investment groups, um, doing training, coaching, mentorship, and then just started flipping more houses, grew the real estate sales business. And in 2017, I hired a real estate coach and he taught me to do two things. He said, I want you to go out, make cold calls and make videos. I was like, those are two things that I want to do. Two things that I'm deathly afraid of. Hate the way I look, hate the way I sound. But he's like, you got to do it. And I was paying the guy like 500 bucks a month at, at that time. And I was like, if I'm paying this guy, I have to do the work. So yeah. started doing the work, started building a following on social media, started getting deals, started getting more listings. And then it just started to grow and grow and grow from there. Where did the hate the way I look, hate the way I sound come from? Interesting. I think I think that definitely comes from my childhood and just the way that I was brought up. But I think a lot of people suffer from that. Um, a lot of people I try to tell to make videos and stuff like, oh, I don't sound good. I, I don't look good. But I tell them, I say, listen, everybody knows how you look, right? So people follow you because they like you, right? So they know what you look like. They know what you sound like. What are you hiding from, right? And that's a big fear that a lot of us have when making content. Mm, excellent. Excellent. Because I, I know a lot of people that are watching and listening to this are saying, mm -hmm. uh, you're speaking, you're, you know, you're speaking my language mm -hmm. because I, I go through the same stuff. And that's why this, this podcast is so powerful because it's going to help you, the listener know that you're not alone. One, because we just spoke about how community has completely uplifted you and, and pushed you mm -hmm. into into uncertainty, into scary moments, mm -hmm. but look how you've turned it around. Look how you flipped right. it on its head. So that, that, that's amazing. So now fast forward, you've been mm -hmm. doing this now a few years, right? Mm -hmm. It's 2022. What were some of the bumps and bruises that you got once you started getting a little bit of momentum? Hmm. So there's always growing pains, right? So there's, Right now, we're flipping about 10 houses, like five to 10 houses a month, depending. Some are local, some are out of state. We're also wholesaling, we're developing, we're buying rentals. We're, we're running and operating a lot of different businesses. Some of the bumps, I would say, is just, you know, I feel like I, w I wish I would have had more coaching and mentorship early on, which is something that I'm looking to do now because I could have avoided a lot of, um, you know, for instance, when I saved for that first property in 2006, I started saving and bought in 2011. I could have probably bought that property three, four years earlier, but I didn't, I didn't have the education. I didn't have the right network. I didn't have the right people around me. So I feel like if I would have had the right coaches and mentors, I could have multiplied 10 times faster. So yeah. that, that would probably yeah. be it. Even though things went really good and I built some great businesses, but I also have great people around me that you know are involved. I feel like we could have done things a lot faster if if we would have had the right mentorship, which which is what we're doing now. We're investing in ourselves and we're also investing in other people. Mm, I love it. I love it. I love it. So now fast forward, we are in 2022. I feel like you really got your shit together at this point. Oh, as, as it seems this way, mm -hmm. right? What is... What are what are three major goals that you're really focusing in on now for the company? Because now you own you own your company, right? You own mm -hmm. your own business. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things that you're focusing in on now to help level up the brand mm -hmm. um, and also serve at a high level? Sure. Great question. Well, for 2022, my word of the year is systems. So 
it's about building out systems in every one of the business, right? We have a wholesaling company where we have a partner. We're, we're marketing to 85,000 people a month throughout the country. So what we've done is we've brought on a coach, very expensive mentorship, and we're really investing in our business. We, we restructured the entire company, the CRM that we're using, the cold calling crew, everything has changed. Um, in my personal brand, looking to do more branding, which is very important. You know, I've been so focused on the doing that I haven't really focused on the brand. So that's a, a big part of what I'm doing this year. And third is creating the real estate course because started creating it two years ago and then COVID hit and real estate just got so crazy and so busy that just focused so much on the business and building out the businesses that I didn't have a moment to, to teach any anything to anyone. But now I feel like because of the systems that we're implementing, I'm actually able to take a step back and start to think of how do I give back and how do I coach and mentor other investors? Yeah, what do you want these systems to do for you and the business to help it scale? Well, freedom and multiplication. Multiplication. So really what we do is we've been doubling, at least doubling our business every year. So we just try to multiply, multiply, multiply. Um, but also as you start to grow your business and make more money, uh, the level of stress and anxiety increases. So it's it's just so important to have good systems to have a better quality of life. I, th I think is number one because if you're if you're building this crazy business and you're just a mess in your head and you're full of anxiety, pain, stress, it's not it's not worth it if you're going to die young. So I think it's really about just just creating the life that you want. And back to my original idea of it's a design for living. So how do you design your life? Um, and th and that's and that's really been the focus. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, thanks. So <clears throat> there's a lot of folks that do what you do. I was in a, I was in a mastermind group last year, a bunch of real estate investors, you know, the whole flip thing, the wholesale mm -hmm. thing. Um, and I notice a lot of different personalities. I know a lot, a lot of, a lot of people doing the same thing and that's, and that's for any industry, right? So what do you pride yourself? on? <clears throat> what do you pride yourself on? What makes your brand stand out? and different from all the other folks that do what you do? So there are multiple businesses, but for my personal brand, I would say it really comes from a place of serving, giving, looking to put good out to the world. It's not really about, you know, putting a lot of negativity out, being positive, bringing positive people around us and really giving back. I find that if you're looking to serve people at the highest level possible, you're going to be successful regardless. Um, and that, and, that, and that does permeate in my other businesses with other partners. I only work with people that I know are good people, that their heart's in the right place. And that's really been kind of the, you know, you know the, the. And how do you gauge core. that? How do you, how do you, how do you gauge that? Is it through the questions you ask? Is it through just spending more time with them? How, how do you gauge the right fit? Hmm. Well, I think a lot of it is also seeing how other people act, seeing how, um, they handle situations. I think, I think for me, I've been able to kind of pick up on the nonverbal. I've been able to pick up on people's motivations and you could really tell, I think after being in this business and because every one of the businesses are a people business, right? It's just about the people, whether it's the people you work with or the people you're serving. So I think, I think it also takes time. I don't know if there really is a system to it. I think it's more of an intuition. Um, but then again, I have worked with people that, you know, didn't have the the right um, goals in mind. And, you know, it's just best to learn that early on and separate yourself from working with that person. But I think it's really important to work with good people that the heart's in the right place and that they want to help people. Um, I think it's good for you. And I, and I think it's good for everyone around you. I, I, I believe that wholeheartedly. I think that's, you know, that intuition is so important. Um, so I, I, I see a lot of entrepreneurs uh, being empaths because they, those, those empathic characteristics really help you pick up on emotions and feelings mm. and, and things that the normal individual, <laughs> not normal, but the average individual right. doesn't pick up on. Mm. And that's a gift. You know, that, that's not, that's not something to be ashamed of or, or to try to push down. Mm -hmm. It's something that you should embrace and leverage and, and, and use, mm -hmm. uh, because I, everybody's, everybody wants to be heard. Everybody wants to be 
felt and understood. Mm -hmm. And empaths bring that very easily mm. uh, to the picture. And I think people should should lean into that if, if you're considering yourself uh, an empath. So, all right. So let's get into the course because I want you to, to, I want to spend some time here a little bit, give you an opportunity to talk about the course. So who is this course for? Mm. And as they go through it, or if they finish it, or when they finish it, mm -hmm. I should say, what are they going to come out with? So I would say it's for anyone that wants to accomplish financial freedom. Like that was my goal when I started. And really, it's just diving into all the methodologies and mindsets and everything that I went through, through years of suffering and just inspiration, ideas, and just incredible passion for what I do. Um, I definitely want to share that with other people. And that's why the course is not like other courses. It's not just showing you what to do. It's showing you how to think and how to create extreme success through real estate investing. Now, you don't need to suffer to have success, but I think you need to have the right mindset and your antennas always need to be up, right? So some of the biggest deals I've ever done were at the coffee shop, right? I've done three deals through two people at the coffee shop when I was just there with my son and walking, but it was having my antennas up, being open to communicating and building a relationship with the people around me. So a lot of it is about just the human dynamic, behavior, good habits, and mindset. Now, the goal is for them to walk out of this and to be able to do their first deal in 30 to 60 days. That's that's really the goal. You know, it took me much longer because I didn't have the right mentors and coaches around me, but I now I know what we could do to kind of cut through all the, you know, nonsense and just get right to what do we have to do to find success pretty quickly. Mm, I love it. I love it. Did you name it yet? Yeah, it's mil Millionaire Flip Secrets, but we're going to have different um, – kind of options in it. So we're going to have flipping, wholesaling. We're going to talk about uh, buying rental properties. We're going to talk about developing, uh, raising and brokering hard money and creative financing. So it's not it's not just like flipping houses. It's really encompassing maybe six or seven different investment strategies so that you can make money in multiple ways. Got it. In the real estate space. Right. Correct. Yeah. 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 Okay. So my last question for you mm -hmm. is, I know you're focusing in on systems this year. Yep. Um, what are, what is, what is another big challenge that you're having the business go through this year? And hopefully by the end of this year, you're looking to achieve it, accomplish it, check it off mm -hmm. and be like, we did it. Hmm. Well, in the real estate sales business, I work for Douglas Hellman Real Estate in New York. Uh, we have an office in Long Island, in Manhattan, and Florida. And what I love about my sales business, I've created a team of great agents, young guys that are hungry. They're also what I like to call a three-dimensional agent, right? So I want to create a similar kind of real estate agent that I was, where I would go into a house and say, I could buy your house now for cash. I could help you renovate, or I could help you list it to maximize the profitability. So it's really just about like structuring and building great investor agents yeah. and growing that team. And within the brokerage that we're at, Douglas Elliman, I'd love to turn that into a couple million dollar a year GCI gross commission um, team. And, and, that, and that's another goal. But it's not like we're just focused on one aspect. I find that the business is, you know, it's cyclical and they feed each other, right? So we work with developers. We work with investors. We might sell a building for a developer, right? And then find him a deal, sell him the deal, and then maybe invest with him. So there's just like so many intertwined opportunities by being an agent and being an investor. Now, I wouldn't suggest that for everyone. It works for us because I feel like it's in my DNA and I like to kind of train and coach other agents to do the same. But um, I would rather see somebody just be hyper-focused on investing or just want to become the best agent they can be. It's just my personality and the way that I like to operate. But to answer your question, to really grow that team as well and to create some great successful agents to one of the top teams in our company and in the country uh, to be on the path this year and maybe by next year uh, be, the, be the number one team in our market. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, man, I wish you nothing but the best Thank of you. luck. Thank you. And uh, I'm going to be watching from afar and 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 checking out your progress and your journey and your story as you continue to to design it, which I love. You know, I, I could I could 
I could, I could really relate to that. Um, you know, we, de- we, we design the life that we want, mm-hmm. you know, it's no mm-hmm. one else's responsibility, but ours to do that. Mm-hmm. And when you finally stop pointing fingers, mm-hmm. you'll realize that and you'll start pointing the fingers back at yourself mm. and sky's the limit. Yeah. That's powerful. So, that's amazing. So I appreciate you so much this morning for jumping on and, 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 and chopping it up with me. And I hope all of us um, that are listening that took something away from today's conversation. I'm sure they did. Um, and for those folks that did, please drop it in the comments, drop it in a DM, drop it in a story, uh, tag this show and make sure that you, you, you tag me as well. And I will certainly re- return the love. Um, I want to know what you got out of this conversation today, because uh, that's going to light me up and 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 keep the content rolling uh, and keep that camera rolling. Because just like John, I'm here to help you guys develop and build a strong and reputable and profitable personal brand. Hmm. Where can people learn more about you, my man, before my landscaper comes and takes over all the noise? <laughs> so. Probably the best place is Instagram. Um, it's just at John, J-O-H-N, dot McSherry, M-C-S-H-E-R-R-Y. I'm also on Facebook um, and growing our YouTube channel as well. But definitely link up on Instagram. Send me a message and we'll chat more. Thank you, guys. Yeah, and Thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. It was great talking to you. And I love your story as well. I can't, I can't wait to talk to you more and uh, continue to grow our relationship as well. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. There you have it, my friends. Another one in the books. This is episode 489. Can you believe that? Episode 489. <laughs> Been doing this a minute, guys. Been doing this a minute. If you haven't subscribed yet to the show, it is on all the so uh, all the all the podcast platforms. Pick one. Um, make sure if you're watching this, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, as well. Appreciate all of you guys. Love you guys so much. I will catch you on the next episode real soon. Take care.